Hey, people. Great stuff here. Gonna crack some of the case on these old Egyptian eyes. And they come up different ways, you know, saying, oh, you got a left and a right. And sometimes they come up with both of the left and the right, which may or may not be correctly translated as Mahdi here in the Book of the Dead. The I on the end just meaning there's two. And so that would usually mean, you know, two of the same. It gets the I. Anytime they'll double up a letter, the vowel following will be an I. They interpret Mahdi as the two I's, or with the capital M, the twofold right and truth. And they interpret this as grasping the two eyes of Horus. So I went looking for that to see what kind of picture I could find. You know, this Book of the Dead, you know, some of it was written on scrolls. And some of it was just copied off the wall where it was painted on the wall or it was cut in or formed out. And sometimes it comes with two right eyes and two right hands. In its features, what looks like a knife here represents the hand. And the spiral here represents the tongue, the taste, and also the tongue, the language. And you'll see it on the crown. And you see it on a lot of old Roman money. It means the tongue, the word. And then the two sides of the eyes representing the ears and the smell. And the center represent the sea. And the top represent the thought. And so there's several eyes. They have different meanings. You see this eye here. It just contains the three parts. You know, the sight and the smell and the hearing. And like these are three things that you use when you're hunting. It means to hunt. You know, you look, you smell, you listen. And then when you investigate, you know, then you feel and you taste. But all these, these are all belonging to the land animal. And they're not part, they're not connected to the thought. It represents the thing that we lost. And the best pronunciation would probably be rich. But it comes from a time back, you know, when... The serpent was still in good standings, you know, he still had legs. And so, you know, it seems to be the image of a, a Cheshire. You know, that's something that just appears, you don't know if it's real or not. You know, this old Cheshire cat, it just kind of appears. First thing you see is eyes and teeth. So this is kind of tough here. This is coming out of the tomb of Eunice. Uh, it's said to be the oldest, 4,000 years old. And it's all inset, and some of it has some uh, inset with colored art. And then the rest of it's all covered with this inset writing. So I'm sure this beginning here was set under some type of heading that I'm not seeing in the writing. But at the beginning of this, you know, extracts from the pyramid text of Eunice. It's missing the first couple lines there. And the third line says, Place thou it in thy palm. And I told you I ran to that in the Hebrew first years ago. And I looked in my palm and it said Yah. You know, the Hebrew word for God and the Egyptian word for God, Yah, the moon God. But when I read this here, you know, this is the Tet. It's either T-H or the D. T-N-K-X. It's thanks, you know. Oh, put it here, buddy. Give me your hand. You know, thanks him. T-H-N-K-X-U-M. Thanks him. Thanks him a lot. And then this letter here, they give it a T, but I'm going to read it as an L. It looks like the L. looks like the Hebrew L. And it just fits in all the words better. Otherwise, there's too many words that have three and four T's in a row with all the words that they, all the letters they claim T. The best way to figure these things out is find it with words that are ending with this A-S-K, you know, to speak or declare, you know, as L-T-A-S-K-T-L, let, ask, tell. And this is where, where your word scuttle comes from, you know, the let, uh, S-K-T-L, let us scuttle. You know, and scuttle means to dish it out. You can see it in Wiktionary English, the scuttle, to dish, to platter, a tray, you know, to move with anxious steps, you know, the scuttle, the one that's running around bringing the tools to the workers, bringing the water, the scuttle butt, the scuttle what, 
her, the scuttle what her carries. That's where your scuttle butt, the butt to vat and the watts all the same. Or the deliberate sinking of one's own ship, you know. Loose lips sink ships. The scuttle. Let us scuttle to speak to declare. So this is LRD, you know, LRD or LRT, Lord, oh Lordy Lord, you know, Lord, you know, and if I die before I wake, well, thanks some Lord, my soul to take. So this letter here, it doesn't come up enough to pin it down yet. They'll say in Garner's sign list that it's a turt coming from this TRT, and he's just copying what this guy said, but... What it is, is these letters, um, they'll come up behind, usually the letters are meaning, and it's never Lort, Lort. It's always poetry, it's mixing it up. So it, sometimes this letter is these two letters, or these two letters, or sometimes the three, it might be the M-L-R-T, M-L-R-D, M-L-R. It's hard to tell. But if we look at this, in this word, knife, it, um, it's going to show you why there's a K in the knife. And I'm not sure about this one here, but this is meaning, you know, the one I'm talking about. But this is on, and then the S, and then the F. You know, this is the Q, which is either the K or the F. And then the N, and then the T or the D. And so this is where your word FEND comes from. F-N-D. And that tells me that's what the three letters use for this. This is a FND. You see, they say it's a FENT. But what it's doing is it's on the S. And the first time it's reading is a K, S K N. On skin and then D FENT. On skin defending its. You know, this is next, N E X T. Or defending its. You know, N X T. So all these words, usually they'll be doubled up. And you have to figure out where the break is in there. But the word appear the same all the time and they'll just say knife and it means a whole lot more. But when you just see the knife, it means, you know, you're fending, fending for yourself. And it'll have to be with the letters, you know, before it comes to defend your own skin on the skin defense. And this next probably splits up with the next word, you know, and it's the skin defend and in the XT you go with the next word or the skin defend next. You can see it in this word they give knife, you know, is T H M, you know, them defend. And to pronounce is, you know, them offend next. And I'm sure that's where your word defendant comes from. And fencing. And fence. And they're gonna give you another story that it comes from Latin where the French took it. But no, it's all older than that, you know, it's from the fens and defense. So if this word come out like that after a parry, you know, the P-R-R-I, the perimeter, the parry around the skin defense, then it would be talking about a fence around the property. But that's the base word. So possibly some people were pronounce this as Lordy Lord. And this is possibly, you know, thinks, T-H-N-K-S, the thinksum. And this works just like the Hebrew. You have to read on down, then you come back and figure out what that meant after reading down. But if, if this is just replacing, you know, this M-L-R, you know, it's thinks the Miller, and then the T-M, time, and L-R-K-S. And thinks the Miller time lurks. And so that's like a ancient magic spell. We used to hear it back in the 70s a lot. Miller time. And thou place it in thy palm. Thanks the Miller time lurks. It comes in. You know, lurks. Um, the kasab, they say, is in the Greek, they say to go down. In the Egyptian, means to go down. In the Hebrew, means to go down. It's where the word cassava worms come from, or the word comes from the cassava worm, because it only goes down, it never goes up. You know, Seb is the west, where the sun goes down. And it's, you know, this 
kind of pictures it means you know the tides going down the water's going out to let you know the movement and you know the miller he's the one that grinds the corn you know after it's all grown you bring it to the mill and thanks the miller the time lurks you know it time's coming time lurks to lurks in lurks be in to lurks and let and so the miller time you know it comes from ancient you know you gather all your grain up during the day and you bring it to the miller in the evening it's miller time and that's when you go get something to drink you know the miller's working 24 hours a day you know the water's turning that stone and you just put light loads on it 24 hours a day you don't try to work your stone an eight hour shift and put 24 hours worth in eight hours you know just wearing out your equipment the miller runs 24 hours a day so you gather during the day and when you drop it off at miller time hey thanks to the miller time it's that time when you done did your work now his job the one that's working after hours you know if you're a german you just replace this th with the d you know donka shoe thank you much donka shoe the miller time kasabalit you know so if this might be reading you know alert lord in donka shoe and thank you much from alert you know alert the lord kasab the lord comes down you know most people are looking at this hand as an eye and all the other language you know to make or to in cash them in cash them the ts or the ch in catch them you know in my hand in cash them you know it works the cycle to give the plants to the miller you know go cash them in go, you go into the bank you know and you see the bank in that same word but this is also tanksum, you know, T-A-N-K-S-U-M, tanksum. Place thou it in, you know, they, they take out all your innards and they put them into containers in the tanksum. And you see that in this other line, and I think they use a different T. It's here, thou carriest off them, you know, and it's the commit, K-E-M-T, the commit and then the THLT, the committal tanks in, the committal tanks in. And if you Google a committal tank, you know what's going to come up on top is outer burial containers, committal chapels, containers and vaults, the casket, the committal tanks, to commit them to the ground, to commit them to the ocean. And so this ought to tell us what these eyes mean on these old committal tanks they put them on all these ancient caskets and on the burial mask and though they make it appear like they don't know how to read this they might have had pictures to go with it because you can see here you know the white and the black and grasping the two eyes of Horus the white and the black and so the white and the black is just representing the hunt here you know to see the smell and to hear you know they kept the color pattern right you know to make sure you had an idea that it's just talking about the white and the black not the blue or the green and so it's saying you know the white and the black are the eyes of Horus and they got this Maddie wrong I believe this is the eye of Ari and this is the eye of Anne you know this is the eye of Ari the maker you know the Arian is the maketh and this left eye is Anne. You know, this is Mary Ann. You know, grasping the two eyes of Horace, Horace didn't have two eyes. You know, Horace lost his left eye in the struggle with Seth. And so that would be the eye of Anne, meaning without. That's Anne or Ain. And it's the same thing in the Hebrew, not without Ain. And it's the same in all the Aryan languages and many others. The Ain, you know, coming from the Greek, the Ain, meaning without. Frisian, Saxon, Middle Low German, Dutch, and uh, Middle Dutch, Ain, An, On, Old German. It was in every language, the Yiddish too, An. In all the other languages, it's either Old or Mother.
and in Italian, and you see some old English books on a, will be written as a, a proportion. You know, the left eye is the eye of Horus related to the moon, the eye of Ra is the right on the sun. You know, the feminine, the mother. You can see in the Indian everything having to do with the eye. There's this Anna in it, this Nayana, Lord of the eye, the Nayana, and Dixa. I bet that that was just spelled with the D-I-K-S, you know, the Lord, the dictator, the light of the eye, and the Nayana Dipa, delighting the pretty, the star is the Terra, Nayana Terra. If you look closely, you'll see it's the left eye. It's easy to see who's in the know and who's not. You know, they'll tell you this Anuit cultus means that God has approved our undertakings. But it comes from this word Nuit, meaning night, darkness, nighttime. You know, it's obscure. So a Anuit is without darkness. And the Copti is to begin work, to start or to begin an undertaking enterprise beginning so it's on new it without darkness coped us to be to begin to shape to cope to begin to shape the new order of seclorum the novice a newbie the new order of seclorum the new segregation so it's definitely an ancient Aryan sign that's on the money and they'll say providence means to God's will, but it comes from, you know, to foresee, to attend. And actually, you know, the on was the sky god, you know, the heavens, to see, the, and it's all about astrology, to know the times, and God's will comes with the stars. And you can see it in this eye here, they'll give on, and they'll say that that means the eyebrow. But that doesn't look like the eyebrow. The eyebrows look more like this. So when Toth replaced Horus's eye, he replaced it with the eye of assault. So I imagine he wasn't seeing the difference in the eyes when he was copying this, and he was just so he was just drawing all the same eye and calling it Ori. You know the eyes are left and right. And you're not catching it. But I believe what you have, you know, in the right eye is, is the Aryan, and with the M they'll give it the Mason. And the left eye is, you know, not. And so the right eye is what you're seeing, and the left eye is what's missing. When you look at a picture, you figure out what's missing, and that's what goes there. And I saw somewhere where they gave the meaning of this eye, the man. And so I would bet that that reads with the eye of on with the line over it is the man and so what I'm going to do every time I see these eye I'm going to read them both ways I'm going to try it with an and mid it or, or a or a mid it and like they got it right here the or a mid it and you can see it here in in this story uh, you know the this is the bat the bat or the vat and it's the vada the vada in the f or the Q in the Vatican, His Majesty, the Vatican. They say the lion's the H, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's an XL. It's out in front, just as part of the lion is the XL. And the Vatican, XL, and then as Axel, A X L. Excel as Axel, when W N when sin where you know w-a-r-i-m-a-t-e-t -E when sin where omit it you go to the vatican and uh you confess your sins and they can excel they can excel you you know get you into heaven quicker you know to excel has axel you know to speed up the turn his excel, his axle, when the sin were emitted. And that surely has something to do with Mahdi, meaning the two truths they say. The M A T T, two T's, means an I after Mahdi, the two truths. 
So the two truths, you know, are the way it happened and the way you perceive it, you know, per the house in and see and sieve is to strain through, you know. And so when you retell a story, you know, all, all your, your hearing and your sight and your smell has to go through a process before it gets to your brain. And that process is through the perceive. And I miss this H over here, this H-A, you know. The Vatican Excel is Axel, which on sin were omitted. And so what I'm perceiving through this, you know, is the Vatican has this old scam going on, you know, 4,600 years ago, that if you go confess your sins, you know, admit it, that they can excel you into heaven. You know, this is all in the burial tombs. And so the Vatican has been in control way longer than the birth of Jesus. And I'm going to find that in here to, uh, I'm going to have to make another part on this one. But it also tells me that it was Arians that wrote all this on the wall. This is all in the Arian language. And so the only way to find out what the Arian was back then, you know, you could uh, exhume the writer Annie and test his DNA. But that tells you nothing. You don't know who adopted him, who bought him. And a practice still goes on today. One of the greatest heart surgeons in the world, Dr. Sangati, got millions big place down here in Biloxi and his parents bought him as a child to be the husband of their daughter and they raised him up and sent him through school and now he's got a nine-story Indian palace but I think mostly you know, it has to do with the birds you know the aviary and that makes me think about this sign for they give the wall here and I think it's more of your aviary. I think this is, they give it a of in. You know, you got the chick and the coop and the broken eggs. But yeah, that's probably just the A-V-I and was followed by the I. It's a aviary. And it looks like they're twisting the words the same as the Hebrew. You know, the in the sinuary. Instead of the sanctuary, it's the sinuary. You know, into air out the sinuary omit it you know to air it out to get it off your chest and here's a good one that'll help us figure out some stuff but mostly this here the netter they mean god is what they say you know and this is coming the end of this last one here and you see it around this set often but this god this means a point of interest you know you talk to your phone say point of interest and see what comes up a little flag ancient ancient symbol for point point of interest on a, on a battle flag the headquarters the chow hall the moving forces and and so it means a position you know it's on a flag it's mobile but it's um it's where your word center comes from you know the center center position the headquarters and it's also comes from the set the set enter and that's you know set is the western sky when the sun sets that's when the set enter Ra fights the serpent all night and when the set enters you know that's when Ra the test the test enter and enter the test and you can see that with this final vowel point here, the A, you know, and it's the test sent Ra. The test enter Ra. So this starts with an ancient Cajun word, you know. Air running comes. Air, air running comes. You know, if you hang it out at the mall, oh, oh, Cajun at the mall watching women, you know, him and his buddy, and he sees a hot one, he says, he says, air one in comes. Or uh, if he's got a little Irish in him, he might say, hey, air one go, brah. But, you know, it's where the word, the Aaron, A-R-U-N-N-N, the Aaron in K-E-M comes, S-A, A-A-S-A, S-A, your, your, your brother, air one in comes, brah. Would would be a perfect man, you know. Is is comes essay, 
And so S.A. means your yard man, brother. And then this is, this is where your word anchor come from. A perfect man, you know, is your S.A. anchor. You know, your brother and anchors, the seamen's. This is an NQ here. NQ or NG, you know, same place where hunger comes from and encore, wanting more. And so SA is ISIS. And I believe that's just an IS, you know, in Phoenician, just an AS, you know, just an ESE. And it just got stretched out to the ISIS in the Greek translation. A run in comes SA, the anchor shank. That's where your word ankh comes from. You know, this, this I-N-Q here. And it's, an ankh is just the anchor, S-H-A-N-K. The anchor shank. You know, if you take the bottom off of the anchor, you know, you, all you got left is the shank. And that's where the ankh come from. It's an anchor shank. And so a running comes, oh brother, anchor shank, you know. is uh, It's also on the curse a n q r s you know on the curse on kiss you know on the curse on kiss you see them you know kissing the ankh and what it means ankh represents a mirror and so the the curse of on the kiss you know is 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 beautiful beauty perfect but it's you know, on the curse is it's kisses then backwards s the sun sizzles s s z l the sun sizzle they'll say that uh this is the s and they give this an m and you know the first time i ever seen it I knew it was a z it's a cutting tool it's a z and they give this the a but this is the l and i'll prove it in many many words we'll see they read plain english when you replace this with a l e l or l and on the curse the kisses, the sun sizzle, mama, mama center, mama center. And I'm not sure about these. These are possibly a pair of G's. You know, the center airing tugs or are in it. But programs about jammed up. I'm gonna have to make this another part. I'm gonna get back to them eyes and look into them a little bit more and see better meaning. And I'm going to show you some proof of uh, why I changed the, what these letters sound like. And I'm going to show you one right now. And here's a little proof that this is uh, a L here. You know, just this symbol here is the IT. They say it means white. But it's, it's a street lamp, you know. And it's the base. It looks like a modern street lamp. They had these ancient gas street lamps. And so what comes out of an ite would be light, and that's L of ite is light, the light. And this made me laugh when I read it. You know, this is the A-S, when you're reading it back this way, it's the A-S-U-R-U-T in L-A. You know, and this is a sure waddle, W-T-L-A, waddle. You know, an old man is a sure waddle. But, but this way, you know, add the F, F-A-L-T, you know, the fault, fault to where a sure would tell. You know, when, when they get old, when people get old, we speak the truth more than we worry about feelings. You know, and hath become an old man is, is any, a, not airy, any, a, in any, in any fault. Any fault to wear a sure would tell. You know, your zipper's down. There's a loud noise coming out from underneath your car. Your girlfriend's kind of on the homely side. Your butt getting kind of wide in your old age. You know, may tell in they any fault. May tell in they any fault. Wear a sure what'll. A sure what'll do. Alright, I'm going to cut this off here. Good day.